here at DockerCon 2017 in Austin, Texas, and we're at the Aqua booth. Can you tell us a little bit about the company and how you fit into the Docker ecosystem? Yeah, sure. Hi, my name is Amir Jerbi. I'm the CTO and co-founder of Aqua. We are a container security platform for Docker environments. We are integrating with the containers as part of their life cycle, starting from the development and packaging of the containers, where we can do security assessment, vulnerability scanning of your containers, finding if there is something wrong, if you are using outdated packages, if you have secrets inside of the containers, private keys, anything like that. We integrate into your CI-CD pipeline. So for example, if you are using Jenkins or ThemeCity, you will have a nice plugin inside of those tools. And when you will try building those containers, we will do the security assessment, we will find whether there are issues there, and we will stop your build. It's very important to stop the build because if you don't stop the build, those malicious things will get into your production environment. After the build stage, when, when t talking about productions, we will only ensure, we will ensure that only approved images will get into your production environment. So everything needs to pass scanning, everything needs to be with very good security quality. When your containers will run in production environments, we will ensure that they are only doing what they are allowed to do. We have a machine learning capabilities, so we learn what your containers are doing in production environment. It can take anything between one hour to two days. And after we learn what the container is actually doing, we will lock it down. We call it shrink wrapping. What it means, it means that if a container will suddenly try to download something from an unauthorized uh, network or will try to install a, a, some kind of an exploit kit, those, those actions will be identified by Aqua Solution. We will identify that this is malicious behavior and we will block that. Of course, we will get an alert that Aqua just stops something malicious happening in your environment. So to summarize, Aqua Container Solution is a platform that combines security controls from your development to your production environment. And is it possible for us to see a demo of the product? Yeah, sure. Let's jump into a demo. Great. So what are we, you going to show us? I'm going to show you the Aqua Solution. I will focus on two scenarios. One scenario is for the assessment of images before they are deployed in your environment. I will show you how we are scanning them and making sure they are with very good security quality. And after that, I will show the runtime capabilities, how Aqua can protect your runtime environment. Great. So this is the Aqua console. You can see that we already scan a lot of images. So you, you connect Aqua to the image registry or to the CI-CD pipeline. And every time you create an image, it will be scanned by Aqua. When Aqua find vulnerabilities inside of image, let's take an example this image. We don't just find vulnerabilities in the operating system, but we will find vulnerabilities in programming languages. Java, JavaScript, Node.js, Python, PHP, Ruby, a lot of programming languages. For each vulnerability, we will tell you, hey, we found this vulnerable file inside of your package, and this vulnerable file can, can cause a, there is a description. In this case, this is a remote attacker denial of, of service. Usually, we will tell you what is the solution. An English statement telling you that, hey, you just need to modify the package, upgrade the component into this version, right? Mm -hmm. Vulnerabilities will be of high, medium, and low severity. And the outcome of this assessment will be that we will decide whether this image is worth using in production. You see the disallowed? So you can see that some of the images are, are, are marked as disallowed, meaning you will not be able to run this image in production. Those images will fail if you will try to build them, which is very important because this, ins this ensures that only allowed images get into your production environment. Right. So th this is the first thing. You can customize your policies deciding what's allowed and what's disallowed. If you go to the policies, image assurance, you see it's a shopping cart experience. You can drag and drop controls. So in our environment, we don't allow images with, se with CVSS higher than seven to get into production. You can also specify, for example, that you don't allow uh, any of specifically packages with vulnerabilities. So you can, you can simply click on that, the package blacklist, and then you can say, hey, I don't want JDK to be in my environment, and click on it. What it means, it means that if there will be an image with the JDK, it will be prevented from running in your environment. Very important feature. It, it means that you can control what gets into your environment. We call it the image inflow. 
Now, after you did that, after you filtered out all of the bad images from your environment, so you have a very good security quality uh, created in your images, what we do next is we create those runtime profiles. Whenever an image is running, whenever a container, an allowed container is running in your environment, we will start learning what this container is doing. We will start examining network activity. We will examine files, processes, and all of the, these will be captured inside what we call a runtime profile. For example, this is a MongoDB. It was examined for a few hours, and we decided that this MongoDB acts as follows. MongoDB, we never seen MongoDB accessing the network. It, it didn't do any outbound network connection, so we decided that outbound network connection should be denied. We saw specific files or specific executables being accessed as part of MongoDB execution. So you can see about 10 processes. What it means, it means when you will run Mongo, only those 10 processes will be allowed to run. We also saw that specific users are used as part of Mongo, so only those, these users will be allowed to run. Uh, the outcome of that is if someone will try running MongoDB in the environment, Aqua will make sure that the profile is enforced. Let me show you how it looks like. So I'm going to run a, the Mongo, Mongo image, and I show, I'm going to show you how the runtime profile works. So because there is a runtime profile associated with, with Mongo, if I will try running an executable, a process that, that's not part of, of the profile, you can see that the permission is denied. If I will go real quick to the console, the event, the alert that someone try running a process which is not part of the profile is captured. So you can see exactly that user who just tried running um, a specific uh, command, and this is the ping command, and it was blocked by Aqua, which is quite nice. Well, the reason that we are blocking those processes, the reason for the shrink wrapping, is look at, look at what's inside of the image. There are many, many executables. They are not needed in order to run MongoDB. So we are trying to create a policy with minimum privileges that will still allow MongoDB to run, but in a way that will be secured. The last thing I want to show you is our secret management. So with Aqua, uh, not only that you can control what images can do, you can also manage their secrets. Because with containers, almost every container needs a secret, some kind of a username and password. With Secret, you can integrate Aqua with Hegecom Vault, with your Amazon KMS, and Aqua will go and fetch those secrets from those sources and will allow you to inject those to, into your containers. Let's, let me show you a quick example. When you run a container, like, let's do docker run minus it minus in, you can provide the secret as an environment, environment variable or as a tempfs file. So if I will run Alpine, for example, Instead of providing the name of the secret, the, the value of the secret, I just provided the name of the secret. Inside of the, inside of the Alpine container, you can see that the value was replaced. So instead of the name of the secret, you now do have the value because it was fetched from the Aqua console. Going back real quick to the Aqua console, you can refresh. You now see that the secret is used by a specific container. If I log in, if I click on the container, you see the information, which is very important because many times you don't know which containers is using which secret. Right. And last thing I want to show you, if I click on the secret and I will change the value of the secret, I will save it. I don't need to restart container, I don't need to stop it, I don't need to do anything. It will be injected with a new value inside. Thank you very much.